This time on Roadkill, we're gonna try and rescue a Mach 1 Mustang that's been abandoned for 37 years. Yeah, we're saving it from the jaws of death. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> that was good. This time we're at Colorado Auto and Parts in Englewood, Colorado. And how this all began is these guys built a 39 Plymouth truck that's powered by a radial Cessna aircraft engine. And that thing was on the cover of Hot Rod Magazine, we had it in Roadkill Magazine. And so we sort of got to know the guys who run this yard, which is basically a late model, sort of you pull your own parts kind of yard. But they also have a ton of classics because their grandfather founded this place in 1959. And a bunch of the cars are still here. So I came here last week and wandered all around just thinking, man, we got to do a junkyard rescue. And then I spotted a car that I thought I would never be able to own in my life. And these guys made it possible. And now I'm going to go surprise Finnegan by showing him this car. Nothing good for me has ever happened on any roadkill trip in Colorado. So I have a little trepidation here, but what I do know is we are going to rescue a car on David's bucket list. I don't know what the car is, but the fact that it's on his bucket list means it doesn't suck, so this should be fun. I'm gonna keep it positive, but I do wanna point out the fact that our track record in Colorado has not been good. You realize we tried to flat tow a 55 home from Colorado and it le left bad. it there. We jumped a Cadillac and left it there. Uh -huh. like, we really we are not leaving this one here. We're not, we're not good at leaving this state with what we you know, intended to leave in. The Bradley GT. Oh my God, these are so sweet. Except for the Volkswagen part. Except for the VW part, yeah. At home, Google it or YouTube it. Hardcastle and McCormick. Awesome show. Kind of an obscure reference. They shot it at my high school once though and they actually let me stop and park my Super B next to the Hardcastle McCormick car and get photos. I have them at home. That's why he's a legend. <laughs> it's true. Today is National Mustang Day. No joke whatsoever. Really? Because it's April ah. 17th, and on April 17th, 1964, they unveiled the very first Mustang. Well, wait, don't buy the 64 to 66, because that's the girl's Mustang. Nope. Okay, you bought the man's Mustang, 67 and... Yep. Okay. Well, you have to guess which one it is. All right, well, it won't be a coupe. You do like convertibles, but I really hope it's a fastback. Let me guess. Is that a Mach 1? Which one? This red one, is that a Mach 1? No, it's a sports roof, base model. But the car we're actually getting is a Mach 1. Oh, you sandbagger. 69 Mach 1 Mustang, 100% legit. Ah, this I is like not sandal junkyard. I was gonna throw him a rope. This is arguably the best body style of Mustang. This is the Mustang. This is the only Mustang. I looked for one of these for years. And I was like, I'm priced out of the market. Can't happen. I think I can get a new bumper out of the yard, but. Air conditioning? Jeez. You'll notice the one thing missing is the distributor. This to me has like <laughs> that general mayhem thing going on where it's like a radical body style, but completely beat and just an open canvas for thrashing. Is it the Mach Nun or is it the Disgusting? The inside is pretty damn disgusting. It's the disgusting. <laughs> disgusting is perfect. So I think we got to go get the big forklift, take it inside, and the first order of business has got to be if it runs, and after that, if the transmission works, because either one of those things are gonna shut us down, but I already gave them the heads up that if that happens, I need to have something else ready to just squirt right into it. Whoa. He did that on purpose. <laughs> he did that on purpose. This could go really well or really poorly. Well, this is really cool because it goes all the way to the rear end. It doesn't smash the whole underside of the car. It just bends the tie rods real bad. Whoa, that's good. Yes. Oh my God, this is cool. We've never done this before. This reminds me of the 67 Cuda from Texas. Remember when we forklifted that? It's very bad. Yeah. Oh. oh. So, ah. Oh, he just shook the trunk on me. Whatever's in there. Okay, your hood's a little more smashed than it was before. Well, 
this is about as good a day as we've ever had on Roadkill. <laughs> Found the right car and moved the right car to a place where we can work on it. And I feel like we're spoiled here on Roadkill. Man, this has been an awesome day. Not only did we pick up the Mach 1, but this whole yard is so cool. The Corns family over here is just awesome. I cannot wait to take this Mustang and make it actually drive away from here. This is gonna be cool. They brought the razors. Except for the turds. That part's not gonna be cool That's at all. That's not good. <laughs> the car's cool. Ooh, they got us all set up. I didn't even sleep last night. I was all stoked to get working on this thing. They moved the car into position. They brought us some razors so that we can go cruise the yard and find parts that we need, like a bumper and a valence and a distributor. But number one thing, we gotta find out if this runs because if it doesn't, then we're into an engine swap or something like that. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do. Second thing we're gonna do is drop it in gear and see if that FMX transmission is gonna even move. I have my suspicions about that one. This car's got a 351 Windsor engine in it. It's a factory two-barrel car, H-code. Somebody put a four-barrel on it. I got a rebuild kit for that. Hopefully it works. Shop vac, how about gas mask? That's better. You can't really see anything. It's scary. It really doesn't need to be beautiful. It just needs to be wrenchable and running and not give us any diseases we didn't walk in here with already. Yep. It's reasonably clean in there. Not so much in here. <laughs> Whoa! Linkages is frozen. Choke is stuck. She needs a full rebuild. Okay, I'm going parts shopping. I need to find uh, distributor number one and keep my eye peeled for hood hinges, front bumper. They've got a giant U-pullet yard, but there's some classics back here that have been sitting around forever and ever and ever. Hey, dirt. Oh, that distributor's locked in there. Okay, that's gonna need an implement of leverage. Whoa! <laughs> what is that? That's a dog! Guaranteed Finnegan's back there right now going, how long did it take to pull a distributor out of an engine? It's remarkable, and I'm gonna jinx myself here, but I'm gonna say it anyway, it's remarkable that we haven't snapped a single bolt yet. Right about now, Dave's on the other side of the yard and probably snapping every bolt he's touching just because I said that out loud. There we go. Broke the distributor, perfect. What do you bet that was the only distributor in the yard? That would be my luck. Where's my tools? <laughs> Coming in hot. So does it have a blown head gasket? Crack no, I, I, I'm calling water down the carb from rain, intake valve open. Okay. It's probably okay. Sure. Yeah, let's go with that. So unfortunately I'm defeated and we need auto parts store for a distributor, I think. Unless they have one already removed, I'll ask them up front. But, yeah, I found a great valence and, uh, and uh, bumper. Is it valence or valence? Valence, valence. You say tomato, I say tomato. Right. Stupid carburetor is going to beat me. I spent like an hour dialing in every orifice in that thing, and I'm going to give up because the throttle blades are just like... Bad. I could probably spend a bunch of time perfecting that, but the thing is with the vacuum secondary, if it's not moving totally free, they're not even gonna open. I'm out of time, I want to drive, I wanna see this thing run, so I'm just gonna go run and buy a cheap carburetor. You got it? Hey. Radiator's got a bunch of holes in it. I'm actually taking preemptive measures not to overheat. Imagine that. What's happening right now is Dave's off getting the radiator fixed. I am going to change the oil, put new plugs in it, get the engine on top dead center on number one, and then at that point, if we had a distributor, we could put it in and put spark plug wires, and if we had a carburetor, we could put that on and fire this thing up. But we don't have those things. So I'm just gonna do everything I can 
to make ready for when we do have those things. Right after I sweep all the turds away so I can crawl into the car. Uh oh, there's water coming out of this. <laughs> that's not good. There's oil there, that's good news. If anything in this car is gonna kill me, it's gonna be whatever's in here. Ah, oh, look at that. That is a home for wayward spiders. This might need an alignment. Looky, looky, our first new piece of bling for the Disgusting. This is a universal 600 CFM Holly 4160 carburetor. You can find this at most auto parts stores when you're too inept like we are to fix what you have. This is season six. We're restoring stuff here. Yeah. We're going full on cable television. It's virtually Gas Monkey Garage. You know what makes this exactly like uh, Gas Monkey Garage? We're cheating. Aaron's not here. <laughs> See what I did there? I have complete guilt that we not only have a shiny new carburetor, but an absolute <coughs> Chinese knockoff of an MSD ready to run distributor. All they had. All I could get on short notice. It looks suspiciously familiar, right it's, down to the cap. It's called a Pro Billet. The part number is the same as an MSD, I oh, think. Man. So we need gas. Um, we need saws all to cut off the folded up exhaust manifold. Some sort of turkey baster type thing to fill that would be nice. Yeah. If we knew where that was, that'd be great. That's worse than pig pen. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So we don't have any fuel source hooked up right now. It's just going to be drinking whatever's in the bowl. All we're really looking for is for it to fire a little bit, rev a couple times, let us know that it's actually going to do something. That's gonna work. It's gonna smoke like 14 mofos, but it's gonna hey, work. It's in reverse. You have reverse. Well, it smokes like a choo-choo train and blows dirt everywhere. There's little grit in my teeth, smoke hanging in the air, but it runs. I think it'll clear up a little bit and it's gonna be good. Now that we know that the engine is, you know, got some life to it, the transmission might work a little bit, we're gonna do the fuel system, because once we put a new gas tank in it, replace the rubber lines and stuff, put a fuel filter, then we'll be able to actually tune it, and most importantly, find out if the transmission works by driving it around after Finnegan, you know, vacuums the interior and gets in there with the 409 and stuff. We're friends, but we're not that kind of friends. Really? No. <laughs> Let's exercise the demons. Yeah, and the Mustang, the trunk floor is the top of the gas tank. I need that. Air so we need to clean it out. Ooh, numbers matching jack. Bye bye. Yeah? Somebody might want. Somebody else might want. Who did this keep warm at night? A prison blanket. Yuck. Why am I doing this? I don't know. Strangely fascinated by it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah, oh, you can taste like the stank. <laughs> Green shag carpet, ladies and gentlemen. Dude, remember these? Oh yeah. Wow, I'm surprised you remember those. I just saw it on TV. There was a time when oil actually came in a metal can or like a hard cardboard can with a metal lid and you would go boink and shove this into the top of it to pour the oil in your engine. Who wants to play baseball? That was the original jute padding. Yeah, it can stay original. Go back from where you came. It's much smaller than I thought it would be. There we go. Made in Canada. That's in Canada. All right.
Today's the day. I can feel it. We're gonna be driving this thing today because the engine runs. I'm gonna get the radiator back from getting rotted out. We're gonna go through the brakes on it. And if we can bear to sit in this thing, we're gonna take it around the block. It's gonna happen. Watch this. What is that? That's coming out of the rotor, dude. New calipers. And to go with the new calipers, brand new brake pads. These are from EBC Brakes. These are the Sport Compound. And this is a sporty car, so they go together. Man, this drum is completely rusted to the axle. If I can't get it off, we're going to fire. That was big. So the problem is, is that the center of the drum, the hole in it, is completely rusted to the axle. And we've used, I think that cracking noise you just heard might have been it actually releasing. Yup, look at that. Bam! Fix it with fire every time. That was textbook use of heat. So the master cylinder is not moving fluid to the back brakes and we think it's that instead of a clogged line. So we're gonna change the master. Luckily you bought one, so. I did, because this isn't my first barbecue. The studs are so long that you can't get the master cylinder off because it hits the shock tower. That's hilarious. You gotta apparently take the booster off with it. Yeah, you've got to cut a, you got to cut a good amount. Okay. Good blade. Yeah, that was really nice. Mach 1 owners everywhere are going, dude, just take the booster off the floor. Right? I know. Uh, victory. Now the brakes work and I got the radiator rotted out, but Finnegan and I had to hit the junkyard again to find a radiator hose and hood hinges. We are getting so close to firing this thing up and tuning it. All right, I think we're set. Well, we got water in the radiator and I think we got all the fluids in it. Transmission fluid even looks high, so we're gonna fire this thing up and hopefully tune it, make it run right. Remember me mentioning that wasn't tight? I tightened it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Fuel pump works. Well, we've reached the inevitable. There's nothing left to do but clean the poop out. <laughs> this sucks, dude. It's terrible. <laughs> this truly sucks. Yeah. We've had some bad jobs on Roadkill. I think this might be the worst. Call Mike Rowe, man. Here, let this me just go ahead. Job. I'm gonna start big. Ready? Oh! oh ah. it's, it's petrified. It's breaking apart. Oh! This is disgusting. Doo doo! Catch! I will roundhouse kick you so fast. <laughs> Ew. You wanna get this one? There's a monster. No, over that's here. on your side. I'm good. What is this? Ooh, ashtray. Oh, that's the I'm quarter window. You one up. This one looks more like bunny. Did you use human. my quarter window to scrape that poop off the carpet? Damn right I did. I don't have a trash can. Dude, here we go. This is the quarter window. <laughs> well, it's not like you're gonna lick it. Pink grapefruit juice. Ah, there's a big turd right here. Big turd? Giant one. You want this? No! <laughs> wow. I mean, that's <laughs> genuine right there. We need to set this carpet on fire. This is not safe. It's gnarly. No matter how much I vacuum it, 
we're not getting the disease out of the car. These seat belts are worse than the ones from the missing link. Oh, I'm not wearing them. I am not putting that across my body. If it snows, I found your jacket. Wow. Another clue, peppermint schnapps, dude. That explains a lot. Oh my God, there's a pile of poo. I'll say one thing, they weren't lactose intolerant. That is solid. <laughs> that is some petrified Jesus. poo. <laughs> this is starting to look not worth it. That is a lot of poo. And, oh, yuck! Did you get it on yourself? No, I dropped it all over the floor. <laughs> now it's oh, no. blowing everywhere. Hey, you know what we need? Get the seat out and then just get most of the carpet out by hand with a razor knife and then power wash the out of this thing. Yeah. This isn't like, ah ha ha, this is funny roadkill. No, this is, this is ah ha funny roadkill. We're going to the ER if we drive this thing. Yeah, the floor is a little bit rustier than we'd hoped for. But the only reason we know that is that Mike and I stayed here really late and got the whole interior out of this thing because the dookie was bad. And so this morning we're gonna go in here and pressure wash the whole interior and try and make it not so hantavirusy. But the good news is there's plenty of drainage. So there shouldn't be too much water left in the car when we're done. Before we started pressure washing, we wanted to do everything that involved uh, lying on the ground so we didn't have to lie in the mud pit. So I tried to lube the thing up, Finnegan sweeping up, and this is Eric and Adam Corns. They run the place and they've been dying to fix this bumper because it's so maimed. Watch how fast they are. This is gonna be good. Wow, that's really, really good. The front bumper is key to the styling of the front end. Yeah. Where'd you get the popcorn? You get it free when you go to Colorado Auto and Parts, right at the front. I'm gonna get me some of that. Can't work without popcorn. How come you guys don't have your own bags? Working on it. Okay. <laughs> It's all steamed up, I can't see. I don't want to inhale the steam. Oh, I'm blowing the floor out of it. It's like you're cleaning a dog kennel. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I can't wash it enough. Man. It's just a lake of poo residue that he's standing in right there. I don't want to get water in the gauges. Yeah, right now the electrics work in this car. Let's, I know. As he aims directly at the fuse panel. I've never pressure washed a steering wheel in my life. Set and record, once again on roadkill. But I feel good about it. Look how good it looks shiny. Oh, I know, the paint's much better. Maybe we can wash and wax it. Clear coating, that's what everyone says these days. Here's our wheels and tires, which I hope fit. I consulted a friend and I think they do. Um, Cooper Xeon RS3S, and it's got a 275 Ford in the back, a 245 45 17 in the front. This is uh, American Racing TR70R wheel, kind of like a torque thrust, but with a different cap. 17 by eight with four and a half inch back spacing in the front, and 17 by nine with five inch back spacing in the rear. So we'll find out if that is the key to success or not. The other thing is you can fit bigger 17 inch wheels on the Mustang than you can 15s, because in the front, the control arm hits the wheel if it's a 15, but if it's a 17, it actually goes over it like that. Okay, going down, down in front, boom. Yeah, it sits way too high, but I, I like it. It still looks good. Yeah. We've come so far and we're getting so close, but then I got the hood hinges off the wrong year Mustang. So it's back to the yard to find the right stuff. 
crashed. Ugh. No hinges. Oh, mangled hinge. Wrong year. The hood latch is rusted shut. <sighs> Giving up. Not one functional hood hinge. David struck out. He's back at the shop putting the hood pins on the car. And I am going shopping in an ATV, searching for the elusive chrome air cleaner. Nope. Two barrel curb. That's not gonna work. It says potential. It sucks that it's raining, and it sucks that this hood is smashed shut because under here is a 14 inch chrome air cleaner. I need a pry bar or a drive shaft. <clears throat> All right, it ain't pretty, but it might work. I have options. It's really cold. I may have assaulted a 66 Mustang to get this one. And it's raining. And it's raining. And then this one. Um, That's five liter Mustang stuff. Either that or it's off a Ford truck with a 5.0. Ford truck. Yeah. OK. You know what the really bad news is, though? Either one of them will work. There'll be no way to actually install them. Uh, is the hood permanently <laughs> attached? Yes. So. I put the hood pins on, standing back admiring them, like checking it out, and I hear click. Then I realize that the hood release lever is right here where it's bent and is wedged <laughs> up against right there and needs to pull this way. Ah, that's awesome. Well, let's go test drive it then. <laughs> it's ready to go. Transmission works. To me, that's been the roll of the dice the whole time. I think it's full, but it's hard to tell because there's stuff in the Dipstick tube. Dipstick tube, I know. But you know, it acts like low fluid. It's like you rev it up, it goes. You know what else I'm gonna do that's gonna be very daring? Power steering fluid. The dipstick says empty. Probably means massive leak. Power steering worked except for it blew fluid everywhere. Puking. Water pump. That's awesome. <laughs> but look at the positive side. It banged into gear hard. Sure did. It's about that test drive. Oh, the lower radiator hose blew off. Thought you tightened that. I did. I ramrodded it, but I also greased it, so it obviously didn't like it. Oh. So I'm actually like really, really positive right now. I think it's going to work. The transmission worked. Oh, yeah. So far. Our starter switch has proven not too reliable. So I'm going to add a power wire from the battery into the car because I don't trust the wiring in the car either. And then I'm going to run a wire from the solenoid into the car and we'll just touch them together movie car style and hot wire this thing every time we want to start it. the new starting system. Okay. <laughs> Where's the screwdriver? And that's why they have neutral safety switches. Yeah. Ready? Yes. Moving! That's hot. We're in a Mach 1! <laughs> We're in a Mach 1! Let me test brakes. Hard. The booster doesn't work. 
past the gate. Anything beyond that is a win. It has way too much timing. Second gear. That's a lot of smoke out of the breather. If we had a hood, you wouldn't even notice. Uh, oh, I'd have a rear view mirror. I think you might have all three gears. I think it does. As a fact. Oh, the power steering just totally ran out of fluid. <laughs> I call that success. Put a light on it, figure out where it's at, put a hood on it. Align it, exhaust system. Yeah, and then venture out a little further. Yeah, not, oh! Oh, it's a lot smoke. What is that? I think I might have come out of the valve cover. Oh, it's puking something. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, look! There's like the turds on fire. See the glowing embers? Oh, it'll keep breathing it then. It's like the weeds and stuff are on <laughs> fire. So that was a pretty good first test drive. It gets all three gears. It stops even though the booster doesn't work. So it's a really heavy pedal. The power steering works, except for that it has a leak in one of the lines and pukes all the fluid out in the distance it took to go up this street. So now it doesn't have power steering anymore. Um, I'm gonna say not overheating yet. Although we can probably make that happen in the future. And the thing that stopped us was a giant cloud of smoke that came out of it when I stood on it. So that's either a piston ring deciding it's not so happy, or it's just simply all these weeds on fire on top of the manifold, which is my vote. Overall, really good. Our first test drive was so good, and we made some timing adjustments. And of course, it was time for the first burnout in the disgust day. Well, I think it's everything we expected because it smokes really, really bad, but it runs and drives. The transmission was my biggest worry and it works. So I think now we got to finish the cosmetic restoration, meaning installing the hood, and then go thrash it some more and decide what's next. And by the way, these hood hinges, since I couldn't find any in this yard, they were like 25 miles away at a Mustang specialist guy's place. That one I think is already bent, pre-bent. Find out if they work. Well, the hood's bent, so. It all, line it all up. adds up. Maybe it'll counteract itself. Did you grease these already? I did. Because that looks like it wants to bend. Yeah. See, these are both. This is exactly what's wrong with every Mustang hinge in the junkyard. These are also garbage. Let's take the springs off. Let me hold this up. Pry the spring off. I'm just going gonna, gonna to fling it my way. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Crisis avoided. One of Ford's better ideas. Well, the, spring, the springs are Ford tough, the hinges are not. Ooh! <laughs> A little heavy now? Done. Perfect. It's a race car now. Look at that. Let's go thrash it.
You cannot believe how long ago I gave up on ever owning a 69 Mach 1. I have got to send huge thanks to the Corns family and Colorado Auto and Parts for making this happen. It is unbelievable to even find a Mach 1 in the junkyard, much less be able to grab one that's been sitting since 1980 and make it run and drive and do burnouts and thrash in the dirt. I've got big plans for this thing. Maybe I'll get around to them someday. And you can find out first by following us on social media. We are Roadkill Show on Facebook and Instagram. Support companies that support Roadkill. Buy your speed parts at jegs.com. Watch Put Up or Shut Up, the newest show coming exclusively to Motor Trend On Demand, July 20th, hosted by me, Ryan Lowe's. Hey, did you know that Roadkill goes live on Motor Trend On Demand 30 days before it's on YouTube? What? It is true. So we're going to show people a teaser right now on the episode. You can go watch at motortrendondemand.com. This time on Roadkill, I rescued my dream car. It's two days before the One Lap of America event, which is the perfect time to build your car for the race. Jim, please have an end. Okay, great. <laughs> Guys, there's, there's no engine in here. This is worse than I thought. The race director said he wants us there at noon. We're either going to survive or have a bunch of breakdowns. That's a not good. This episode of Roadkill is live right now at MotorTrendOnDemand.com. That's Spot. I met Spot the other day. He was going to be our pet till I dropped him and knocked some teeth out, and I felt guilty about it, so it became a hood ornament. <laughs>